Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to yet another double unboxing video. This is the third double unboxing that I've made over the last six weeks. I feel like the kid on Christmas Day that's opened all of his presents before anyone else has even managed to get out of bed. I've got a bit of catching up to do when it comes to the full reviews, that's for sure. This double unboxing courtesy of Joma Shop. They sent me these two watches for free. I don't have to send them back. I try and get big brand pieces in from Joma Shop, stuff that I wouldn't normally have access to unless I could borrow them from a, a subscriber, stuff that I want to see on the channel and watches that I think you'd be interested to have me review as well. All they ask in return is that if you are interested in either of these pieces or pretty much anything else, that I direct you to their website and I will do so by leaving links to these watches in the description of the video. Joma Shop prices are so sharp that there is an enduring meme amongst watch Facebook groups and watch forums. Is Joma Shop legit? Yes, it is legit. The reason their prices are so sharp is because they're a grey market retailer. That means the watch is the same, the packaging is the same. The only difference is they warrant the items themselves. So do bear that in mind if you're purchasing out with the USA. What have I got for you today then? Well, I've got a bit of a movie icon. The Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Day Date. I'm sure I've got that right. AKA The Coop. It was the watch that Matthew McConaughey's character Cooper wore in Christopher Nolan's sci-fi epic Interstellar. $625 currently on the back to school sale. Hamilton, part of the Swatch Group, relies on the economies of scale you get from being part of a massive group of watch companies. Just incredible value. I'm really interested to see how this one stacks up against some of the other Hamilton pieces that I have reviewed on the channel to date. The second watch that I've got in is a Glycine Airman Base 22 GMT, 459 US dollars. Now I've got the cream dial one, it looks like it's out of stock at the moment. There's a black dial one as well, same price, I'll leave links to both in the description. Now that is $459 for a Swiss made automatic GMT. Please, if you can think of a better value for money, Swiss made automatic GMT, leave me a note, leave me a comment, I would love to hear from it. No wonder people ask if their prices are legit. Let's flip the camera and peel off some stickers. Double unboxing means two boxes, Glycine and Hamilton. I think I'm gonna start with the Glycine today and I will come back for the coupe in five minutes or so. Now, I just said, leave me a comment if you can find a cheaper Swiss made GMT auto. I just did, also on Joma Shop, 379 for a different variant of this one, but it's a whopper, it's 46 mil and 24 mil lugs. A bit too big for me, but I'll leave a link to that one as well. That's the reason I was keen to get this one in, is because it seems to offer incredible value for money. Now, Glycine Airmen, I hadn't reviewed one in three years, and now I've reviewed two over the last five weeks or so. I reviewed Wilco's DC4 Purist model with a 24 hour dial a couple of weeks ago. I said at the time the Airmen seemed to be like buses. This one is a more conventional GMT four hander though, and that's it in its packaging. Thankfully, Glycine, unlike Hamilton, as you'll see, have relatively straightforward reference numbers. This is the GL0201. Now, all of these Glycine Airmen GMTs have the same base movement in it. It's an ETA 2893-2, Glycine label it a GL293, barely disguising its origins there. It really is the kind of default choice if you want a Swiss made, Automatic GMT at an affordable price, the 2893 is your boy. By far the cheapest I've come across though, well under $500. Let's peel off this outer packaging. So peeled and revealed, and this one certainly ticks a lot of spec boxes for under 500. Note the purple anti-reflective coating on the underside of the flat sapphire crystal here. Screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance. Now that is always impressive for a pilot's watch. They're not really supposed to go underwater planes, not all that often anyway. You're not gonna take full advantage of that on the supplied leather strap, but you are if you pop it on a NATO or a rubber, or if you buy the black one that comes on a NATO anyway. Flip it over to the back there and you have a custom Glycine Airman rotor with some nice Geneva striping on that 2893. Again, all very, very nice for the money. There is a bit of loom on the hands. I don't do loom. 
Loom in an unboxing, but I will show you a Loom video in the full review. And I believe this one, you can track three time zones. So one, using the hour and minute hands, which rotate twice every day. It's like a standard three-hander in that sense. The second time zone you can track using that red GMT hand and the inner markings there all the way up to 24. You can also track a third time zone. If I unscrew that, we should have a bi-directional friction bezel just like on the DC4. You can track a, a third time zone using the outer bezel if you so choose. So a lot of practicality. I reckon it's gonna wear quite well on me. 42 mil in diameter, under 12 mil thick, looks like a compact lug to lug, 22 mil lug width. Let's get it adjusted for today's day and date and let's get it on wrist. So that's it on my seven inch wrist and I think it looks really quite pleasant. 50 mil lug to lug. Now I would normally go for 40 mil diameter watches myself, but pilots, you kind of wear pilots and Flieger style watches a little larger than you would normally wear a dive style or certainly a dress style. So 42 I think is a pretty good size all in. One thing to note, I've only got two holes to go on the strap whereas there's plenty of options for guys with bigger wrists, so I guess this one is designed for them. It's designed for guys with larger than average rather than smaller than average wrists. So what have I done here? Well, I've set the three hands plus date to Sydney home time, so it's 20 to three on the afternoon of Sunday the 16th of August. If you're watching this in another part of the world, then you're probably time traveling. I've got the red GMT hand set for GMT, and I have got the outer bezel set for New York City time just for the sake of it. A couple of things to note then. If you're gonna be using this one just as a regular three-hander, you're not gonna get any help from the markings on the dial because there are no one to 12 markings on the dial. It's one to 24 instead, so you're gonna to have to remember them from angle and from memory, but let's face it, if you can't tell the time on a three-hander, then what are you doing here? One other thing to note, you've probably spotted it already, that GMT hand isn't quite where it should be. I set it to where it should be, but then when I pushed the cram back in, it popped back 20 minutes, back in time 20 minutes. Now, this is an issue I've come across with these 2893 movements before. I'll play around with this one, I'll see how it goes, and I will report back on how it gets on in the full review, obviously. But aesthetically, this one is pleasing me already. I do like that cream dial, the brushed stainless steel bezel, the little touches of red here and there, and the slight discoloration you get from the loom on the hands and the indexes. So if I can sort out that GMT hand, this one looks like being a belter. On to the coupe then. Now I must have reviewed five or six Hamiltons on the channel to this point. Excellent value for money, like I said in the intro. Indeed, the Hamilton Khaki King made it onto my top 15 ultimate value watches list. There aren't many better ways you can spend $400 than one of those, so I'm interested to see what you get for 600 odd from one of these. Packaging's just the same, kind of full wood veneer little box, and inside it, there we go. One very shiny looking Hamilton. So a 945 USD RRP on one of these, which is probably stretching the friendship a little bit. And as I intimated, not quite such a catchy model number, the H64615135. It's not the worst of them that I've seen, to be honest. Let's peel and reveal this one. Well, you certainly get plenty of protective stickers for your money. You also get a much nicer bracelet than you do on some of the cheaper Hamiltons that I've looked at. Multifaceted there, you've got a nice little high polished edge and a much more secure looking clasp. The bracelet on the Khaki King is a bit meh. This one seems nicer all around. Let's peel off that last little QR code on the case back, then size this one and get it on wrist. So that's it, sized and set. Pin and collar links in this bracelet, but no problems there. I took two links out from one side and I'm availing myself of the middle of those three micro adjust holes. It's quite a nice clasp actually. It's got the Hamilton logo there. Oh, pretty solid feeling, nice and secure. So it's another 42 mil Pilots watch, but kind of different set of dimensions to the Glycine. 42, but narrowing down to 20 mil lugs and it's got a slightly smaller lug to lug of 48. Similarly, 12 mil thick, sized up for me on the supply bracelet. This one weighs in at 160 grams. The glycine was a mere 90 grams 
on the leather strap. So certainly a bit of heft, a bit of solidity to this one. Nicely finished as well. Fine brush on the side of the case and on the lugs, but I showed you the little high polished edge to the bracelet links. There's a high polished edge running all the way down from the tip of the lug to the top of the crown guard and back to the other side. Signature Hamilton high polished bezel though, that one will scuff and scratch if you abuse it. Now, push pull crown, 100 meters only. You don't get 200 meters, but like I said, it's a pilot's watch. You're not really supposed to bail your plane all that often. Not if you want to keep your job as a pilot, and it does make the watch pretty easy to set as a consequence. If you want to manually wind the watch, you can just roll it forward as is. If you want to adjust the day and date, you pull that out to the first position and then start rolling. You can see the date going there. If I roll it backwards, you can see the day of the week indicator at the top rolling over. If I pull it the second time, the movement hacks and you can adjust the three hands. Let's put it on wrist. And again, nice size for me. I reckon I could take, man, maybe I can take another link out. Maybe I'll just use that third micro adjust here. I'll watch this size, 160 grams. I tend to wear it above the knuckle and a little bit tighter than I would wear something that was say 150 and 120 grams, but also on a stainless steel bracelet. Yeah, lots of facets to that dial, the hands, those indexes, the big, Classic triangle there pointing down from the 12 o'clock. It's a really interesting watch to look at. I'll get plenty of macro, plenty of outdoor shots with this one when it comes time for the full review in due course. So I think that's where I'll leave these two today then. Two 42 mil Swiss made pilot's watches, but that's really where the similarities end. You get the extra functionality of a GMT movement and that rotating outer bezel with the Airman. You get the full metal bracelet and the day date complication on the Hamilton for your 625 USD. Great backstory to the Airmen. I'll talk about that more in the full review. They've been making these Airmen since the mid 1950s. The Hamilton obviously not quite got the history from the model, but it does have that connection to Christopher Nolan's Interstellar, which can I confess, I haven't actually watched yet. So that is definitely on my to-do list in time for the full review. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you all soon.